but we are moving, I'm moving our stuff into WordPress. So it's taken a few years to get it done, but we're pretty much all our online stuff's gonna be in WordPress before too long. Uh, do a little bit of coding on the side for some friends, but that's it. And as you'll see from the slides, I'm not a designer. <laughs> so why do you want to know anything about the database? And some of the things you can do with it are change your username. If you go to the WordPress dashboard, it says username, you can't change this. Well, you can change it. Uh, I used to work with a guy, and his name was Phil Ricks. And the, it was a university, and they automatically assigned you your user ID was your first initial and your last name. He was not happy. <laughs> so you can go in and change the username from here. You can make a user an administrator. Have you ever inherited a site and you don't have access to, you don't have administrative access to the site, but you have access to the database? Well, you can make yourself an administrator with the date by editing the database. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay. Um, deactivate plugins. It's, if your site's broken, you, in, you uploaded a plugin and it totally white screen to death, you can't get in to do anything, you can go in and um, change your plugins folder, you can rename or delete that one plugin, or you can do it from the database. Probably a lot easier to do it using FTP, but if you don't have FTP and you have access to the database, it's another option. Um, a lot of you here just for general understanding what's going on behind the curtain. And you can also have, if you have your own plugin, you can have your own database tables that are in the WordPress database, but you can add your own tables and access the data, store data, read and write data to those to populate your own tables, your own data, your own plugin. And we'll see, we'll show you what that looks like. So when you go to create your WordPress install, it asks you for the database name, username, and password. This is the database username and password. And you can create the database be whatever you want to call it. Password, don't use password. Um, <laughs> but in this case, it's localhost. And usually your database is going to be localhost because it's local to the, it's on the same server as the, as your, uh, WordPress installation, so it's going to be localhost in most cases. The prefix is, can be anything. I think now they automatically, by default, it'll generate WP123 or some random set of numbers, but I'm using WP underscore, it used, that's what it used to be. They, some people say you ought to change that for security reasons. I, for security reasons, it's probably a good thing to do, but I don't think it's a major, somebody has access to your database there you got bigger problems. You got other issues you need to fix. But uh, feel free to change that. But that's going to prefix all the tables in your database will have WP underscore users, WP underscore. If you change that to be XYZ, it'll be XYZ users. So when you create, when you, inst when you go through that step and say, yeah, create my site, it'll take that database and create all these tables. So let me, okay. let me go here. And so on your site, if you're using a, a host that has cPanel, you'll probably see something very similar to this. And this MySQL databases table or page, that has a list of all your tables. You can create tables and users and things from there. This MySQL database wizard will let you, it'll ask you the questions like what's your username, what password do you want, what table do you want, um, what permissions do you want the users, this user to have, and you can do all that. And you may probably see PHP MyAdmin, and that's the tool we'll use to go in and actually get into view and edit content in the database. But these are tools that make it really easy for you to man create your database. So b before you create your site, you gotta have the database on your server, and that's the tool you'll use to create that database. So when you create your database, or when you create your site, when it goes through the install process, it's gonna create, what, three, six, 
11 tables. The, and we're going to go through each one of these tables and explain what data is in there, how it's structured, and what you can, can and cannot change. If you change stuff in here, everything from WordPress is generated from the database tables. You can break your site. <laughs> so do so, back up, always back up everything before you do anything in here. But only change what you know what you're changing. So if you're interested, here's the database structure. And you can go to that site, and it has a list of all the tables. And it's, it's an overview of everything that I'm saying today. Or not everything, but give you a good overview of what I'm going to talk about. And the plugins can add their own tables to that. So these are just the default minimum tables that come with in WordPress by itself that WordPress needs to have. I'll show that. So this is PHP MyAdmin. So when you log into PHP MyAdmin, you, it creates this table, and you can use this to go in and manipulate and view your thing, your your database. So you got the left column, and you can look at the structure of each table. Browse lets you see all the contents of everything in that table, and we'll play with this later. So we'll start out with the users table. The first thing you're going to do is create a user. And user number one is the user that you created when you started, when you created the WordPress site. It asked you for a user, the admin user. So user one is always going to be an admin user. Um, user login, that's what you put in. So these are the, the columns or rows in the table. And or the, I'll call them, these are columns if you look at it in PHP Admin, the columns and the values for that. So for each user, you, they've got an ID. Everything referring to that user, it doesn't refer to Jay Dorner, it refers to user ID 1. Um, and that's why you can change that user login here, and it's not going to break anything. Shouldn't break anything. <laughs> now, you notice that user password? That is not my user password. That is a MD5 hash of the user password. Now, different plugins will make change it so it uses a different hash code, but you should be able to put in an MD5 hash, and the plugin will accept it. You can log in, and then it'll change it to whatever hash it's using. But I'll show you how to change that. So if you forget your login and you can't get in, but you have access to the database, you can change that password, and I'll show you how to hash that. The user nice name and is different from the username. I learned this one the hard way. Um, if you go to the, the author's page, each, pa each author, each contributor to your site has an author's page. If the username has spaces or apostrophes or some other characters that aren't underscores, hyphens, and, and uh, alphanumerics, then the user nice name is what's going to be used for the slug of that um, user. So if you change one, you probably want to change the other. 99% of the time, they're going to be the same, unless the username has some character that's not a uh, URL part. User email, user URL. I can come in here and change the email and not worry about notifications getting sent. So sometimes I want to touch things without warning anybody, without sending out notifications. This is one place I can do that. Shows the date when I was registered. Activation key, that's usually going to be empty. But if the user goes in and says, I forgot my password, it will put a value in that field. And then that's what's used. That's what it is sent to the user to click on to get their pass, to reset their password. So, and then once they reset their password, that's wiped out. Um, user status is no longer used. That's a leftover from a really old version of, of WordPress. And the display name is what is shown. When I log in up in the upper right corner, it says, Welcome John Dorner. That's what's shown up in that upper right corner. So if you go into a the dashboard, 
this is the, these are where all those values are coming from or are used. It pulls it from the database and puts them in here. So to change the username, you go to PHP My Admin is the easiest. Any database editing tool you can use, but PHP My Admin seems to be the most common and popular. You have questions? Okay. That's all right. So, so I'm going to go to my users table. And here's the here's what that table looks like. In PHP My Admin, I can double click on a cell and type in it, replace it. So if I wanted to change my user nice name, I can double click there and it puts me in the edit mode and I can edit that cell. Escape key or hitting enter will accept that change. Yes. No, it is not. So I can click edit. If I wanted to change the password, I'll click edit. And here's this user pass. I can change this to say MD5. And then replace that with my awful password. And I go, and you'll see it's no longer got my password, my awful password in there. It's got some 32 character hash of that. So now I need to log in with my awful password. So that's a really quick, easy way to change it. Yes? No. It's a, it's a one way thing. So I can't look at this. Now, if I had. I'd have to have a table that has all the possible passwords. Now, I, a lot of places, what they do is they'll have hackers will have a database of pa common passwords, and they know what the hash is, and they can say, "Oh, this one's in our database. We know what that what that is. That corresponds to the password." So that's how you change the login. Um, And we change the oh, this is just showing what we just did. Here, I can also go in and change the uh, display name, user nice name, all that the same way. And we talked about that. Yeah, you gotta make sure you click go or save, whatever that's in there. Okay, the user's meta table. This is where you get the, the user role is in here. So this is information about the user. So you've got the user nickname, the first name, last name, description. Do I have rich editing turned on? Or in the, when you create a user or edit a user, you can give them permission to use rich editing or just plain text. I don't, I don't know, does that still even work? Is it still there? It used to be, but I don't know why they would still have that. Anyways, syntax highlighting, um, the admin color, a lot of things that I can change as a user. This is where it remembers. If you were look using the, uh, the editor and you clicked on t text view, instead of visual, you select text. When you come back tomorrow and you open another page, it's going to be in text view. In one of these settings, one of these meta keys has how are you using the visual editor or the text editor? So it knows every time you open a page, it's going to say, oh, he likes the text editor. I'm going to show him the text editor instead of the visual editor. Um, these WP capabilities, these are the roles that, I'm, that I have. User level, that's deprecated. That used to be, there used to be multiple levels, but now they've done away with that and instead using capabilities. Serialized data, you notice that for the user for the capability, it had this funny string of text. That is what's called a serialized array, and it is a string representation of that single array. Now, you can have multi-arrays, multi-level arrays in here, and it'll, they can be stored as serialized data. And there's a couple tools that I've found that really work, that I like. A serialized editor. And I'm 
Yes, you sampled it. Yeah, that's broken. So it, I let them know yesterday or the other last week that their thing's not working right. So let me. So no, I can't copy it from here. Come on. I'm going to copy this. But I can put text in there and it shows me. So I can change administrator to um, editor. Oh, come on, really? Oh, that's because I'm doing it in the wrong place. Sorry. Because that editing it there will break your site. So, or break that user from being able to log in. I need to edit here. And this is, shows me what the, serial, what the new serialized data looks like. Oops. So you notice A1, this S6 indicates that it's a string of six characters. So this is why, because there's serialized data in your database, you can't just go and say, I want to replace all the occurrences of this string with this other string. Because if there's any occurrences of if, they're, if the two strings are different lengths, it will break all the serialized data. It won't be able to unserialize that array and use it. So if you want to edit anything that's serialized, you want to use a tool like this, paste the old one in, put your values in here, and then copy this and replace that in the database so you're not breaking things. You still have a valid serialized. Um, it's a string of one character, and then the value is one. So this one is representing this value. Okay, so when you change that, it, would that break something? Or oh, that, that's, that's basically saying I, it's a true-false. Oh, okay. So that value represents true. Okay, okay. So for the editor permission, I have, I have permissions. Okay. But you'll see serialized data el elsewhere in the site. And that's why you don't want to use just globally go in and replace everything in the database, because if there's any, if that value is somewhere in serialized data, it will break it. Um, so if you want to change somebody to be an administrator, you search for that user ID in the table. So that's going to be in this user meta table. I'm going to look for user with the ID 1, if I'd find what my ID is, so in this case my ID is 1, and I'm looking for a meta key with the value of WP underscore capabilities, and I'll paste that A1 S13 administrator B1, and that will make user 1 an administrator. So if you don't have access to your site, and wh what I do, I don't remember that, I go to another site where I'm an administrator, go and find that code, copy it, and paste it. Or you can find this presentation and say, here's the string of text that I need to copy in that to make, make me an administrator. And this unserialized.com does the same thing. You put your block of text, your serialized data in, and it tells you, here's, here's the unserialized. I like the other one because I can go in, the serialized editor lets me actually go and manipulate it. Okay, the WP options table. This has information about the site. So these are all where all your options for the table are, for your data, for your site. Um, you can, a plugin can store options in here. So a lot of sites, you may have some var variables that you plug in that you answer questions and it'll store it in the database. So the site URL, I was doing this just the other day. I was moving a site. Well, I had a database, and I put it over on the new site. I, I restored it, used um, upload draft, and I didn't have the pro version, so I moved the site over there, and everything worked. I restored it to the new location, but when I clicked on, when I went and visited the site, it 
loaded the index.php file, it looks at this site URL and say, oh, here's the URL, so it redirects to that URL, which was the old the de demo site that we were building. It's like I couldn't get to my new site that I just edited. So what I did is I went into PHP my admin and changed the site URL and the home page so that now when I click on when I go to that page it doesn't redirect me to the other site. So this was a tool that came in really handy just yesterday, Friday. Um, but blog name description, all these are options that you can set about the page, about that site. And there are literally hundreds, and the longer you have the site and the more things you do with it, there may be thousands of rows in this table. So looking for, through here could be quite long. But these are just some of the type things that you would find in that WP options table. So deactivate plugins. Here's, if I wanted to deactivate plugins, there is a active plugins um, field, and I would just change that to a, this a0 colon 0, a colon 0 colon curly bracket, curly bracket, will say it's an empty array. So basically there are no active plugins. So let's go and look at that. So I'm looking for active plugins in the meta value. So we're going to go here. We're going to go to the, make this a little bigger. We're going to go to WP Options and use Search. And the option name is Active Plugins. And it brings this up. Now I can copy all that. I'll go to my serialized editor, paste it in there, and here's the value of that. I don't want advanced custom fields to be active. I can remove that, copy that, and paste it into, replace that, this field here, the option value, with just the one plugin, and I've disabled that one plugin. But you gotta use the, yeah. you gotta use the serialized editor to do that. You can't just come here and say, Oh, I don't want, it looks like I just want to get rid of this. You can't just go and delete that one plugin that's listed there because then it breaks that's no longer a valid serialized data and it will break your site. So that's another, that's another way to get around your changing a plugin. Like I said, you can do that with FTP and rename or delete that plugin folder, or you can just totally rename the plugins folder and that will deactivate all your plugins and then you rename that plugins folder to be plugins. And it's, that plugins folder is in the home slash um, plugin, WP content slash plugins folder. So in the WP content folder is where your plugins are. Any questions so far? Everything? Yes? In your serialized uh, array, the first, the first uh, alphabetical A, B, 1, that's determining how many key values there is there in the... How many, I think it's how many, very, how many key, how many, yeah, how many elements are in that array? I'm not sure if it's how many elements or how many top level elements. I'm not sure. I'd have to get in and play with it. I don't care. I use the serialized editor and it does it calculates it for me. But yeah. Yes. So when you deactivate the plugin, you reactivate. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes it so it's no longer active and then your site would if it was working before you installed and activated that plugin, it'll continue working. That plugin's still there. If you click activate, it'll probably break your site again unless you make some change or fix whatever the cause of breaking your site was. Well, you can delete it. Well, once you, if you did it in the database and, and deactivated it from here, then you can go to your plugins file page and, and delete it from there. Or if you, and that would be if you don't have FTP access. If you got FTP access, you can just delete that plugin folder and it's gone and it'll deactivate it automatically. Yes. Yeah. Now you can't access your admin page, but you can access this. 
Right. Mm -hmm. So this is just an alternative to FTP. I could do everything or for the deactivating the plugin. I could do it with FTP, or I could do it here. So whichever. Would actually deactivate it within that one plugin. Whereas just deleting it by FTP wouldn't change the database, right? Well, when you go to the page, it'll look and say that plugin is not here. I'll deactivate it. Okay. It will update your database based when it, based on the fact that the file's not there. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, oh, thank you. I need to repeat. Thank you for reminding me to repeat the questions for the camera. Um, she asked, is, do I, if I delete the plugin, does the database get updated? So if I, using FTP or whatever file manager, however I get to the site and delete the, the plugin folder, not the plugin folder, but the active plugin folder, then when you visit this page with WordPress. When WordPress connects, it'll go and look and say, oh, that plugin's, there's no file there anymore. That folder doesn't exist. And it'll update the database to that field in the database to show that um, that plugin's no longer in the list of active plugins. So it doesn't matter whether you do it by deleting the folder, that plugin folder, or doing it from the database. Either way, work. Depends on which is fastest and easiest for me. Do I have access? Do I have easy access to FTP? Do I have the database open? Or do I have FTP open? Where's, where's my finger? All right, the post table. This is the big one. This is where all your posts are. It's not the biggest table. This is where the information about your post, the, the title and stuff is. So who's the, each post has an ID and posts, are pages, pages are posts, um, attachments are posts. Um, in Gutenberg, the remembered blocks, is it remembered blocks, is that what they're called? Remembered blocks, yeah, remembered blocks that you create in Gutenberg are actually a post. Um, revisions, each revision is a post. Um, i trying to think, custom, every custom post type has every item in that custom post type is a post. And each one has an ID. If you go to your post or pages editor, you'll notice the ID at the t in the URL. That refers to this ID. Post author, it stores the, I the user ID for the post author is stored in this table when the post date was made and the date GMT time. So the post date is based on the time on the time zone of your site. The post date GMT is GMT time for that same, it's the same time, just local versus GMT. If you change your time zone on, in your settings, it's not going to change all your posts until they're resaved. So you would have to go and update each post for that post date to get changed to the local time zone. The post content, that is the content block of that post. Now, if you've got custom fields or other information in that, that's stored in the post meta table, but the content, the, the content of that post is in this table here, in this field. The post excerpt, post status, whether it's a draft, a uh, revision, uh, published, that's the post status. Comment status is, are you allowing comments or not? So that'd be a one or zero. Ping status, same thing. The post password, did you, put a, uh, did you assign a, po a password to the post? It's stored here. The post name is going to be the slug of that post, the permalink for that post. Um, yes? Um, do plugins add to the No. She asked, uh, does a plugin like, the, uh, like Yoast add information to the post table? No, it does not. All that data goes into the uh, post meta table. Now, um, do they have their own tables? Well, I'm thinking they may have both. It may be a combination of the two. I'm not sure exactly how Yoast does it, but it could be done either way. Um, post parent. 
like if your page, your post has a parent, that would be the ID of the post ID of the parent. GUID is a unique identifier and it's got the URL of that post. Don't worry about it, don't change. If you move your site, the GUID will have the old site URL in there. You don't need to worry about changing it because it's not used for anything. Um, it's just, it's a unique identifier and I don't know where, if it's used anywhere. I haven't found anywhere. Menu order, if this is a uh, menu item, a menu item, it would have the order. Um, the post type, is it a post, is it a page, is it an attachment, is it a revision, is it some custom post type? Same, MIME type, if it's an attachment, it'll have the MIME type. Otherwise, that MIME type field will be empty. How many comments? So the post meta table has information for each post, a lot more information for each post. So in this case, the uh, meta post ID was the, uh, uh, I had a, a page that had the Big Boom Design logo center PNG was the featured image. So post number two had that image on it. So this is letting me know that the thumbnail ID for post two is number 19, the po and that's the post ID of this attachment. So it's also saying the attachment is WP attached file. Here's where the file is. And here's metadata, the width and height information. That's, a, that's another array. And the alt tag is here. So this is two different posts and how they relate. So let me, let me go back in. We'll look at one of these. So here's what that post table looks like, or some of the stuff. And let me show you the post table. So we'll look at posts, and number two, this is, and I'll edit so it'll show it a little better. So this is, this is just a, let me scroll down and make sure I'm speaking right. This is a, a page. So the post type is a page. And we'll scroll back up to top. Its ID is number two. The author was, is number one. It was posted before I changed the uh, time on the time zone on my site. <laughs> and here's the content of that page. The post title was sample page. And there is no excerpt for it. It is published. There are no comments allowed on it. There's things allowed. The post name, so that's the slug, so a sample hyphen page. Um, it was last modified, both local and GMT time. It does not have a parent. There's the, the GUID. Um, not on menu, and the post type is a page. If we go back. Mm -hmm. would, what would it be if a, if a, if a post had the ID of two? Or, or would it, would no, it all, all, all post, the, the posts table yeah. has yeah. all pages posts, so this ID field is unique. So there could, there's not anything else with that ID of two. So if you change that to post, it would just become a post? It would become a post. post. Okay. Now, it would probably not work right, or... It, it would probably confuse it because it's like yeah. I need post have something else and some fields aren't there. Yeah, but yeah, that would <laughs> it very well might break it. Yeah. And let me, let me look for well, I know nineteen. We look at nineteen was a uh, was a logo that I uploaded. So. The ID is 19, author, I, I'm the one who uploaded it, the date and time I uploaded it. Here's the title of that. Um, post status, it's going to inherit status open. Let's try to think anything else in here of interest. So here's where it says it's an attachment and it's got a uh, image. It's a PNG image. 
and there's no content for this and no excerpt because it's a it's an image, it's an attachment. So did you say that plugins store stuff in post meta? No. Oh. They uh, wait, when you say the post meta in the post meta table? Oh yeah, yeah, plugins will yeah, they can stay save data in plugins can save data in the post meta table. Okay, that, that was the post table. This is the post meta table. And yes, plugins do save a lot of advanced custom fields will save a lot of data in this table for each post. So if you've got an advanced custom field on a post, it's going to put that value, what the field name is here, and what the value of that field that you put in here is. And it'll actually have another, I do know uh, ACF, it'll have another field that's got the key and the, the, the field name and the field key, a table, a row for that, for each of those items. Okay, the terms table. This has all your, all your, all your categories and tags are in this terms table. And what, this, what the slug is, um, what the ID is, and then you've got a term taxono taxonomy table, which says, okay, this is the term ID. Um, is it a category? Is it a tag? Is, does it have a parent? So that's stored in the term taxonomy table. And then we have a terms, term relationships table, which says this, ta this object ID is the uh, post ID and the taxonomy ID and then what order. So usually the orders are all zero. But uh, this is saying that post number one has tags, um, is tagged with the three categories, one, two, and three, and the tag. So it's got all these categories. This, that post had all four of those categories, or all three of these categories and the uh, WCAVL tag. We can look at that later. So you look at your database and you say, I've got a lot of other tables other than those WP ones that we just looked through. And they come from plugins. So let me go. So right now, I don't have any of the, all I've got are these dozen WP tags. So let's go on. Was it my awful password? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was it. Well, I got two updates since this morning. Um, so I've got plugins. Hey, there's a new update for Gutenberg. Ah, we'll do it. I hate to see those things that in there. Um, I'm going to activate WordFence. And that's activating. Did you know that that little spinny thing, when it's going counterclockwise, it's sending data, and when it's going clockwise, it's receiving data? It is Matt Mullenweg's first plug-in. It's just a it's a plug-in for you to copy and use to, as a starter. You can delete it. It has no value. It is a worthless plug-in. <laughs> but it's on every WordPress site initially. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to refresh. Uh, all I did is click that um, install WP or WordFence. And now... I've got a bunch of tables in my database. Yeah, WordFence throws a ton of tables in your database. Now, some plugins will use the WP options to store data. Some will use the post meta 
to store information about that post. Some will create their own tables. So it depends on the author of that plugin and how it best does it, their, what their issues are. So now each one of those tables has its own. Here's the, here's the WP config. So these are the settings for WP or WordFence. So I'll, notice all the WordFence, they all start with the WP underscore, but then they all prefix with WF. So I know that, okay, those are WordFence. Hopefully you can figure out from the prefix which plugin that those tables are. So, yeah. So, yeah, if the developer did. If I go and delete, uninstall and delete WordFence, these tables stay here. So I, and the advantage of that is if I come back next tomorrow and say, I want to reinstall WordFence, it's got all my settings, all my, all the old data is still there. Now, a lot of plugins will give you the option, if I delete this plugin, do you want to delete all the, all this stuff with it? Some do and some don't. So this one doesn't. So if I deleted WordFence and I really want to get rid of WordFence off my system, I'd have to come here and delete all these tables. So, yes. He's asking, are there plugins that will go in and delete these tables? I don't know of any. I've never looked at it because it's easy enough for me to come in and, and do that. Does anybody else know one? WP Sweep? WP Sweep? It's not saying anything about. Maybe it's not doing. SiteGround has one. Okay. So it looks like WP Suite does a lot of stuff, but it doesn't remove. It optimizes database table, but it's not removing unused database tables. So. Looks like a good plugin. What, nine months, 60,000 users? Those are good things. Four and a half stars. That's all good up to the current version, so that's good. All right, so now I can go through here and do all my settings, and then it'll populate all those tables. Questions? Yes? That you would do at your uh, host. That's, that's, has, that's your hosting service determines which version of PHP you're running. So yeah, you need to communicate with them and depending on how you, what kind of a host it is, what... Yeah, they may or not, yeah. They may they say, no, you're on, yours is at 7.0 or 7.1. I think is 7. Point, what's the current version, 7.1? 7.2 is the new version of PHP? Okay. 7.2 is the new version of, is the current version of PHP. But if you, it, as long as you're running 7 point something, you're, you're good. 7, obviously 7.1 or 7.2 would be better. But uh, if, as long as you're not on 5 something. There was no 6, so if, you, if it says you're on 6 something, you got it. somebody's lying to you. They skip 6. So, if you're a plugin developer, you can, this is the code that you would use to connect to your own databases, and you can use the my, my um, WPD, actually it would be, yeah, you use WPDB, and you can look at the reference for WPDB if you want to use your own plugin, use your own database tables in WordPress, in your plugin. That's where you go to start with that. And I'm not going to get any deeper into that tonight, today, than just say, there's, if you're a developer and want more information, start here. Or come see me and I'll help you. Here's a bunch of um, 
tutorials and help and where you can go find stuff. So again, these will be on the site. They're available. And that's it. Any other questions? That WP Sweep will optimize a database. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is an operations. You can go here and maintenance, analyze, check, defragment, optimize the okay. table. Right. So yeah, that's in PHP, okay. it's in PHP MyAdmin. You can do that. Okay. WP Sweep would be easier because it'll go do, do them all. But yeah, you can do some optimization here. And if you know SQL, uh, and go browse. This is the SQL statement. You can edit it in line, or you can click here, and it'll help you with your SQL statements. If you want to learn SQL, this is a good place on your local dev environment, not on your live server. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's nice, it, before you go and do that, under operations, I can go and copy my table. So this will make a real quick way to make a copy of that database table before you start messing with it. So if you break it, you can rename this one back to what it should be. Yes? Um, there are tools. I've used Razor SQL. There's a lot of other page, uh, MySQL tools, um, editors, or programs that you can install locally. Um, and you can have the program installed locally and, use, and work on a remote database. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, say that again. I want to use Okay, I'm not familiar with what you're talking about. Does anybody else can anybody help them using Cloud Air dupe? Sorry. You need to be in a more, this is not the advanced <laughs> decky people. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm curious about, so I've been doing WordPress for years, uh, recently learned uh, Blue Gun Rails. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious about integrating MVC type of, you know, infrastructure in a WordPress site. And so I'm wondering if anybody has any tips for that. I know there's, like, you'll, there's a plugin. And there's you'll want to use the REST API? And WordPress has a built-in REST API and endpoints. And that way, you get your, uh, um, she asked about using data from WordPress outside of WordPress. Or is it actually um, integrating MVC type infrastructure in the WordPress site, um, you know, like without having to set up a hosted little um, app or anything. Um, does that make sense? So you, MVC is So you would use the REST API to get the data, and then whatever program you're using to, to display it, your view, would use that data. Okay. So you'd have an endpoint. Um, it would be some. There's a uh, WP JSON, and it'll return. I didn't have enough information on here. I got to think what the, I don't know what else is on here right now. Off the top of my head, I use custom. Um, but this returns JSON data. So each post will have its own. All the data about that post you can pull out of here, and it's pulling it out of the database. But it's parsing and doing everything you need 
So you could get it out of the database, or this would probably be the better way to do it because it gets parsed and run through the WordPress function. Is this post then I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know that rest, the rest endpoint off the top of my head. Has anybody worked with the WordPress and VC plugin? Any other questions about the database? Yes. On that same, along the same line, uh, would that be the same thing we do with React? Is use the the, end, the bug the endpoints? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what you do with React. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, like PHP, the the database uh, sometimes has updates. I think right now it's like uh, MySQL five six or MariaDB ten. Seems like it's just a it's just a, a series of tables with serialized data in it. What is what is the update actually? What is the advantage of updating from one version to another? It's just a table. No, it, what what's being updated is the um, MySQL code. So the code that's reading the data and all the functionality that MySQL has is what's being updated when you go from MySQL 5 to MySQL 8. I think 8 is the new version of MySQL that just got released. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it'll have new functionality and hopefully better speed. And so it's it's like changing versions of PHP. It's the, the data doesn't change. It's changing how how oh, how, really? how the how how MySQL Works how it's parsed. Okay. How, how MySQL because you hit you hit the MySQL program to do its work to I, I send that select asterisk from table name and it goes and gets it reads the data file but it goes and runs itself. It's like updating Word. Like you're not changing the documents. You're really up, cha updating the program that's dealing with those documents. It has new features and speed changes like that. So that's what updating my SQL will give you. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Let me pull up that uh, slide for the free resource again. This one? Mm -hmm. Again, these are these slides are available. Thank you all. Thanks for coming.